So now that you've seen the syntax for lambda expressions, we need to give some examples of when you can use them. Later on, we're going to see lots of good examples. There are these methods called map and filter on collections, uh, and other similar what are called higher order functions or higher order methods that we will make great use of. Uh, for now, we're going to kind of come up with kind of a, a fairly simple example of it. They're, these functions are called higher order functions because they are functions that you pass functions into. Uh, you can also have a higher order function as one that returns functions. So basically, if you're if it's a function that deals with function, it's kind of at a meta level, and we call it a higher order function. So the function that I want to do here is a way of generalizing combining three numbers. So let's consider some little functions. Uh, sum three takes an x, which is a double, a y, which is a double, and a z, which is a double, and it returns a double. And in this case, that double would be x plus y plus z. It's a fairly simple function. Another way to combine three numbers would be multiplication. And so I could define something very similar called mult3 that I pass three things into and it multiplies them. Other ways that I could combine them. Well, maybe I want the minimum value of these three of these three numbers, in which case then I could use min as an operator and do that. And we can show that all of these work. Sum of one, two, three gives us six. Molt, I'm gonna go ahead and four, two, three gives us 24. Min gives us back the two. I can very easily define a max. And what I'd like to do is I'd like to take all of these functions and possibly others and combine them into one single function. And I want to call it, instead of calling it something like sum three, I want to call it combine three. Okay, because we're going to make it kind of um, make the way in which we combine them be unspecified. Okay, the user gets to specify how we combine them so that all three of these, so they can call it one way and get a sum, call it a different way and get a, a product, call it another way and get the minimum. So in addition to these three value arguments, I also need the function that I'm going to use to combine them. And we'll call this function f. Now just like these others, we have to specify a type here. And so it turns out the way that you write function types in Scala uses that same rocket notation. And we start off with the arguments. So the inputs to f, f could be a plus, in which case it takes two arguments, an x and a y, and it gives us back another uh, value, which is the sum of those two. And since our inputs are doubles for the whole function over here, the inputs to this function will be doubles, and it will produce a double. So this is how we write the type, a function that takes two doubles and gives us back a double. And then, instead of putting the plus here, I can call f on x and y and take the result of that and combine it using f with z. And so this will actually do the proper precedence as well, assuming that, that this uh, operator is left associative. So here, this is really x plus y and then that result plus z. That's what this will do. It takes f and combines x and y and it takes that result and combines it with z. Now, the power here is the fact that I just wrote this one function and it's supposed to do what these three functions did as well as possibly other functions, other things that we haven't come up with yet. Any way that I wanted to combine these three numbers, uh, as long as I want it to be left associative and I want to use the same operator between them, I can do that with this function. And we can demonstrate that. So let's go back to our one, two, three, and I want to add them. Well, I pass in a function that represents addition. So x and y is the input, rocket, x plus y. 
This is one of those perfect places to use the underscore though, because I can also write a lambda expression for addition that is something plus something. Turns out that these two are equivalent. You can't always use the underscore notation, and you should remember how to, to use the rocket notation because you'll always be able to fall back on it. But there are situations like this where the underscore notation is just far more succinct. Um, and I would argue it's actually very highly readable as well because I'm combining one, two, and three with something plus something uh, as opposed to having the X's and Y's getting in the way there. What if I want to multiply the three? And we'll go ahead and change this back up to a four as we had done before. There we go. Note, I was able to use the exact same function I had before and just change one of the arguments, and now I'm doing multiplication. I didn't have to write a whole separate function for doing that. If I want to take the minimum of my numbers, I can do that. I never wrote the max before, but now it's easy to do the max. Okay, so combine three is a simple example of a higher order function. And it is a higher order function because it takes one of its arguments which has a function type, and this function type is specified by using, having a rocket in the type there. Argument list, rocket, the return value. So that gives you a brief introduction to higher order functions and shows you how we can use these things. I guess the last thing I should note, I said earlier that when you write lambda expressions, you pretty much never put in the types. Note here, I didn't have to say x colon double and y colon double. I don't have any colon doubles there. And that's because in this usage, it knows that f takes two doubles. And so we don't have to tell it that because Scala already knows that. It was told that in the definition of combine three. As I said before, we're gonna see a lot of this type of stuff later because it gives us a significant amount of power in how we express things in Scala.